Hello, good afternoon. This is Ian Phillips. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but I hope that this webcast will meet your purposes. I will be talking about the economic development of our UK electronic systems community in the two years since the ESCO report was published. Now just to put this into context, the original ESCO report was published on the 27th of June 2013, uh, but actually the data point which was used for the calculation of the economic footprint information was the 5th of July 2012. So we were using data which was uh, inevitably out of date because there's collection times and so on which is being produced. Uh, so when we're talking about a two-year data point, then we're actually talking about something which is around the 5th of July 2014. <clears throat> so just to remind you then, the data of the ESCO community, the UK Electronic Systems community, on the 5th of July 2012, basically identified 850,000 people um, working in the electronic systems community uh, with 50% uh, of those people embedded in other industry sectors. It identified 80 billion pounds worth of economic contribution to the economy and they, as a percentage that represented 5.4% of GDP. Now the ESCO uh, executive team decided at the time of producing the report that it was an appropriate thing to do to set some ambitions for the community for 2020 and so they set the ambitions of a million people employed in the sector, a contribution of 120 billion amounting to at that point around 7.1 percent of the economy. So cutting straight to the chase then, uh, you're interested to see what what things have changed since that in that two years and what I can tell you first of all is that the employment which was on the 29th of August 9, uh, 2014 was already exceeded the 1 million. That the economic contribution uh, had all has already achieved a hundred billion so it wasn't at it's not yet at the 2020 figure but it's well on route for doing that and its contribution to the UK economy has already moved from 5.4 percent to 5.8 percent if we track those things forward at the current rate of progress then we would quite reasonably expect that by 2020 we're looking at an employment in this sector of 1.7 million and well on track for a 200 billion contribution by 2020 and 7.4% of the economy to be coming from the sector at that time. Uh, I warn you that that is of course a linear extrapolation but we only do have two data points at the moment uh, so we can't really do any other forms of extrapolation so it is, it is a risky uh, thing but uh, right now uh, if the growth in this sector continues at the level which it's been doing, then these are very att attainable figures. So let's look at that in numbers. Well, first of all, the employment in the electronic systems community grew by 154k, 154,000 people. That's 18%. Um, if you look at it in another way, that equates to 10% of the growth of UK employment which was 1.6 million in the same period. 15,000 more enterprises were created. That's 15,000, that's, that's compared to 30 odd thousand, that's nearly 50% more enterprises in this sector than there were two years ago. However, 86% of these are less than 10 people in size. So there are a lot of small enterprises which have been created in this time, which is a very positive thing. They created 22,000 new jobs, but of course they're a sign of seed corn for, the growth, for further growth in this industry. It's interesting to note that the greater than 250 size enterprises reduced by 10% during that time. Uh, now, that could be a point of concern, but I think there are actually quite reasonable mitigating circumstances for that. Especially when you consider that the group as a whole employed an extra 170,000 people, which is 40% more people during that time. So it's quite likely to have been associated with mergers and, uh, and convergences, grouping activities, which would produce a reduction in the number of enterprises, but a growing number of employment in the, those enterprises. 
There was an interesting uh, 20% growth in the mid-size enterprises, that's uh, enterprises between 10 and 250, but a 15% reduction in the employment in the sector altogether. Um, well, some growing into higher scale perhaps, would, which would be a good thing, uh, perhaps some reducing into lower scale. There was r a large increase in the number of small businesses, don't forget, so there might be uh, an interpretation of that in that direction, which of course would be a bad outcome. Uh, the wage bill grew by 21%. Uh, which is good, of course, but uh, it's also like it also shows uh, that it's mostly due to increased employment, not increased salary. By the time you take out the increase in, in employment in that sector, then the growth in salary was a more modest 2.5 percent, which is actually a pretty good one uh, over this particular time of peak austerity. Now that was the deltas. Now we'll look at the absolute numbers. So the employment then, at in excess of uh, a million, is already 3.28%, 3.3% of the working population are working in electronic systems community activities. Just to remind you, these are things throughout the electronic system life, life cycle. Uh, so we're talking about manufacturing, we're also talking about design, we're talking about component production, both physical component and virtual component, we're talking about electronics, but we're also talking about embedded software, and uh, we're talking about the research community as well, who are working uh, to provide technologies which will feed into the electronic systems as such. Uh, GDP contribution then uh, is 98 billion pounds, 5.76% of the economy, and there are 45,175 enterprises um, specifically focused on electronic systems. So that's excluding the enterprises where electronic systems is embedded, uh, so the likes of aerospace, automotive, uh, Tesco's, where there are an embedded systems community, but it's not their primary activity. Uh, so we're not, not counting those figures. Those figures are included, but in terms of the number of enterprises, those enterprises are not included in the count. So these are 45,000 primary electronic systems enterprises. Um, not surprisingly, 88% of those enterprises are small, less than 10 in size. Indeed, only 3% of them are greater than 50 in size. So there is a large community of small enterprises in this area. Uh, but it's also fair to say that 56% of the employment in this sector, on the other hand, is in the greater than 250 size uh, businesses. So these are actually quite big businesses. Um, and 80% of the, uh, the employment in this sector is in businesses which are greater than 50. So there's a, there is a substantial number of businesses um, and, and thriving businesses in the, uh, in the 50 plus size and indeed in the 250 plus size. Only 6.8% of the employment is in the businesses which are less than 10, uh, 10 people big. That's not um, in any way dismissing their value. Uh, these are companies from which the growth, a lot of the growth uh, in the future we can expect. The average electronic systems wage salary is 42,077 at that time. Uh, it's one and a half times the national average at that time, again 27,270, which makes this a highly productive uh, sector. Now it's, use, it's interesting to look at the term productive because this is a term e e economists use. It's not necessarily just the uh, amount of bits of bent metal that you can produce from a given machine at a given time. What they're talking about here is the economic contribution that a person makes and on a first approximation that's related to the average salary. So the salary, if you're in a highly salaried job, the assumption is that you're all a, high, a highly skilled job or a more highly skilled job and therefore your economic uh, productivity is higher. You have more money to spend basically and of course uh, economists want you to spend that money and indeed to borrow against the money, the security associated with your job. Uh, we can dispute the, uh, the appropriateness of that measure, uh, but that's what they do. 
Now, these are big figures, big improvements here, and so we have to ask the question of how confident are we in these figures? Well, how confident am I in these figures is perhaps the main point because I did the, uh, the spreadsheet calculations on these. Now, first of all, this spreadsheet calculation 2012 versus 2014, it's exactly the same spreadsheet. So all of the factors which were included in one were included in the other. Where it was possible to update them because of reliable data sources, they were updated. Uh, where it wasn't possible to update them, uh, where they were uh, considered factors, then the, the, the factors were not changed. They stayed exactly the same. Which means that we should be very confident in the delta figure, even though there may be uh, uh, some more uncertainty in the absolute figure. Now, the biggest change factor that came into this was the source information which came from uh, the FAME and IDBR databases from BIS. FAME is a commercial database which um, has the list of all of the current businesses, uh, their, uh, uh, their registration numbers and the, the major figures which are captured from their annual reports. The IDBR database is a database which is only accessible to uh, HM government, uh, and so BIS need to access this, but they correlate. We use the FAME database to identify the businesses which are involved in the electronic system community to identify their registration numbers, and then we use the registration numbers with the IDR database to be able to identify the people who, who do tax returns against those company uh, registration numbers. Now, of course, this is potentially sensitive information, so I was not able to see the, uh, the actual numbers from individual companies, but the information was available to BIS. I had the consolidated v version of it, which is used in this report. Nevertheless, these figures are actually pretty accurate. So we know how many people do tax returns and what tax returns have been registered, so corporation taxes as well, against the businesses which have been identified from the, um, the FAME database. So that gives us very good confidence in the size of employment by companies uh, and the companies and their involvement in electronic systems. So very reliable. The, the mechanism for extracting that information from the, uh, the FAME and the IDBR database stayed exactly the same between 2012 and 2014. So errors that occurred in one would have occurred in the other. And the, uh, if you look at the spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet is available uh, from me or from the ESCO website, uh, the spreadsheet uh, does uh, operations on that information, but essentially it's uh, delta information. We don't expect it to be fundamentally wrong, but the deltas, because of the consistency of factors and so on, will make it uh, the, 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 the figures very reliable. Um, moving on, then in conclusions. Um, in many respects, the ESCO 2020 ambitions are already exceeded for employment and soon will be so for the GDP contribution. That means that this sector is growing rather faster than we expected. 5.7% of the UK economy in 2014 is a quite respectable number. We are a growing and significant force. There are not many sectors which are in the UK industry which... which lay claim to more than about four and a half percent of GDP contribution. So this is, this is a very significant one. We know that tourism at something like nine percent uh, is definitely higher, uh, but um, other uh, activities are significantly lower. And of course, because they have a lot more visibility than the electronic system, then they tend to be more readily recognized. But this is an argument for saying that the electronic systems community embedded in the entire electronic systems life cycle is something which has to be recognized. It is a valuable contributor to the UK economy and it hasn't got to be underplayed by any means. Now, 10% of the employment growth during those particular two years is quite startling. So that means that 90% uh, of the employment growth occurred by other things, but 10% came out of this sector. And if you also bear in mind the high productivity of this sector, then that actually means that the economic growth in those two years, nearly 20% of it will have come from this sector. That is very significant. 
because it means that as a, as a sector it's delivering way above proportion uh, to its activity and, um, uh, and I think certainly needs to be recognised, um, encouraged, not supported, I, me- I emphasise not supported because this community is obviously growing well, it's doing well uh, and so we mustn't assume that it needs help. Uh, if anything, it's an opportunity for the government uh, to gain additional benefit out of, uh, out of the health and the strength of this community. Um, and we, of course, would be happy to, uh, to help them to do so. So we've seen significant numbers, uh, increases in the number of startups, large businesses in large business employment, uh, and this is, of course, against a background, uh, an economic background, which is perceived as being difficult. Uh, so it's, uh, you can imagine that in a growing or a positive market, then we would expect in many respects these, these situations to be repeated or indeed exceeded. Uh, so the UK's electronic systems community is healthy and continues to thrive despite the recent economic conditions. Alas, I'm still sad to report that I don't believe we are any more visible and certainly not more valued than we were in 2013 and for a sector which has been having such an impact on the economic growth which the UK is uh, benefiting from at the moment then I think that this is a very serious oversight and something should be done uh, to correct this. Uh, Thank you. That's all I have to say at the moment. Uh, But if you do want to have a copy of this uh, presentation, then if you go online to the uh, the webpage www.esco.org.uk, the economic footprint, or you can look look at the information which is available on my particular blog, enp24blogspot.co.uk. Thank you for listening.